Hi there, Del here again from Live and Learn Thai. I've seen a lot of cost of living surveys uh, on YouTube and other channels and most of them include a section on uh, monthly motorbike rental, how much it costs. Now it got me wondering, do these people uh, really rent motorcycles long term in Thailand? And are they really suggesting that you do the same? So in today's video I'm going to have a look at whether it's better to rent long term or to buy a motorcycle. So when I say uh, motorbike, I'm talking about these uh, 110 to 125cc uh, automatic or semi-automatic step-through motorbikes and scooters that um, holidaymakers typically rent on a daily basis and uh, expats uh, need uh, for conducting their day-to-day -day business. And uh, we're not talking about big bikes here. That's a, a different story altogether. When I say long term, well I would say anything over three months and the pendulum starts to swing in favour of buying rather than rental. So let's have a look at the cost. It may seem like a good deal to rent at first um, when you bear in mind that the, the average cost of a daily rental is about 200 baht or maybe 150 low season and uh, it goes down to maybe 2,500, 3,000 baht per month if you're renting on a monthly basis. Maybe even cheaper if you're renting for a longer period of time or it's a particularly old uh, old motorbike that you're renting uh, and rental shops are all over the place. There are however equally as many shops selling uh, both new and second-hand motorcycles. They're all over the place too and the process is just as easy as renting. You hardly need any more paperwork. So let's have a look at what it would actually cost you to buy uh, a brand new motorcycle uh, from a recognized dealer. And we're talking about the popular dealers such as Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki. Uh, there are the main ones and you'll find them on almost every street corner in towns in Thailand. And your basic um, basic model uh, 110cc step through scooter would you'd be talking about in the region of 40,000 baht on the road price so under 40,000 baht let's say for the um, for the basic model uh, if you go a little bit higher you're looking at something slightly better maybe a 125 then you're going over 40,000 and um, anything up to uh, 50 for a top of the range um, Fino or Scoopy or Fiano, these uh, these trendy little motor scooters which um, which look like they've been uh, designed to look like Vespas. Uh, so that's the price of buying a new one. Uh, and as I said, that's an on the road price. Uh, you find very little difference between uh, between shops. Uh, I wouldn't say you pay more by going into uh, a registered dealer of a particular brand than one which uh, is just a shop selling all brands. Uh, second hand shops, well there are plenty of them around as well and you would get a very very good maybe three to four year old low mileage um, 110 to 125 cc uh, brand name motorcycle for uh, anything over 20,000 baht. So that's um, getting on for half price. If it's particularly low mileage maybe getting up a bit 25, 26 and if it's any older than that, um, the price starts to go down, although not as rapidly as you'd think. Um, motorcycle prices, well, they, they don't tend to depreciate so much as they do in Western countries. A little bit more so than for cars, uh, but certainly not the same as in, um, in probably what your country of origin is. So um, let's say a 15 year old 100cc Honda Dream um, which is a bit battered and beaten you might get that for under 10,000 baht um, so you've got that at the very very bottom of the range but if you think about it that um, under 10,000 baht that's just about three months uh, motorcycle rental for a, for a good bike from a motorcycle shop so that's already paid for 
so that is then now your asset and um, if you get to put in your name which is quite easy to do as I said there's not much paperwork involved uh, you will need uh, one document as well as your passport and how to get that um, I've already done a, a video on that so you can have a look at that I'll put the I'll put the link in up there and you can follow that to get your um, uh, what's it called again uh, residence certificate uh, which you will need when making the purchase you could also buy from um, from someone privately uh, there are always people uh, selling motorcycles if you're in a tourist area you usually find that there's some um, some foreigner who's at the end of his tether end of his trip maybe run out of money even and uh, looking to sell uh, a second-hand motorcycle uh, you might even get a better deal about that way the only uh, other issue to think about there is that you would have to actually register the motorcycle yourself you'd have to go with the previous owner to the land transportation office and fill out some paperwork to transfer the ownership and put your name in the uh, in the green book for the motorcycle registration so what are the pros and cons of buying and renting well the the biggest con to buying is the fact that you have to put out all that money up front I wouldn't even consider buying one on higher purchase on credit you end up paying a, a way more than the motorcycles worth uh, only buy if you have the cash to buy it uh, don't go in for any credit arrangements uh, with these motorcycle shops so that's the biggest con putting the money up front but uh, you have the pro of not having to spend any additional funds uh, every month you're not paying out 3,000 or 2,500 every month in rental fees you also have an asset uh, which you can then sell uh, you might find that after a year of having your bike you want to sell it and you'll probably find that it hasn't depreciated all that much if it's a second-hand one you probably uh, get the 25,000 baht that you paid for it almost back and so you've uh, you've lost nothing but you've uh, you've gained what you would have paid out for 12 months of rental uh, motorcycle new motorcycles tend to depreciate a little bit more uh, when they're brand new for the first year or so but after that it starts to slow down uh, one of the main cons of renting is that you have to leave some form of uh, identification quite often these shops will ask for uh, your passport or your driver's license and not just a copy I would say never give them that um, a copy yes but not the uh, not the original there is a scam in operation where people rent uh, motorcycles out to, out to people they get them to sign the standard rental agreement which states that um, if you lose it or it's damaged beyond repair you have to pay the, the full price of its replacement value not the actual value of the motorcycle but its replacement value so you're talking 40,000 uh, that you have to pay out if the motorcycle gets lost and what often they do is they get the spare key and they go to wherever you're staying and in the middle of the night they'll take it away and you have to report it as lost of course and if they can't find it uh, you have to stump up with the cash so uh, that is one major uh, drawback of the rental uh, side of things so obviously better to buy in that case uh, you could find that you rent to save stumping up the cash up front and you have to stump up 40,000 anyway because um, it's either lost or damaged the reason a lot of people give for not renting is that they have to take care of the maintenance costs themselves now let me tell you that maintenance for motorcycles is very very cheap as is minor repairs even major repairs on these small bikes uh, they cost virtually next to nothing and um, so I wouldn't use that as an excuse to continue renting it's, um, it's not going to cost a major chunk of money uh, to maintain your motorcycle and um, you also have the benefit of knowing that it's then well maintained uh, you can do it yourself one of the other plus points when you buy 
is that it's a motorcycle of your choice, be it if you buy new, you can buy whatever you want, get the colours that you want, uh, if you buy second hand you can shop around, get the best deal that you want and, um, and so it's then yours, uh, your motorcycle. I've heard a couple of people giving the stupid argument, oh, I get bored with my motorcycle and uh, I like to change it quite often, that's why I rent, uh, well, I'd never suggest doing that either, um, with any vehicle, the more you're used to it, the safer you are when you're driving and it's difficult enough driving on uh, Thai roads and Thai traffic uh, without uh, being on a, on a, or in a vehicle that you're unfamiliar with so uh, chopping and changing your motorcycle isn't a good idea either. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist, uh, do the math and you'll see that uh, if you're staying here longer term, anything longer than three months, it, uh, it makes sense to, to actually purchase a motorcycle of your choice. And that's it for today from uh, Live and Learn Thai. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it informative. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more and feel free to leave any comments uh, in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.